Hi, I'm Chris James, and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today, we're going to be talking ex-vegans. We're missing a piece of the puzzle. You start getting healthy, and you just become a better person. You need to start focusing more on the individual. All right. So this topic seems to be trending on youtube right now it's trending in the facebook group so and i've actually been asked to speak on this a couple of times uh, i spoke on it briefly well not briefly it was a pretty decent video uh the raw vana reaction video that i did last week but i wanted to speak more broadly right so in that video i talked about raw vana but I want to speak more broadly about this topic since it seems to be causing a lot of confusion. Uh, you know, there's just people are very leery about switching to a, a vegan diet, um, you know, because there's there's all these channels out there and it's really not that many. But I think in the grand scheme of things, when you when 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 you're used to watching like YouTubers, Right. Let's say let's just say, for example, there's 100 YouTubers who are vegan, you know, popular vegan YouTubers. And 10 of them are like, yeah, we're not doing this vegan stuff anymore because this, that and the other. And they have huge followings, half a million or a million subscribers. Then that tends to generate quite a big buzz. Right. And so it feels like the entire community is having this problem. Uh, you know, later on in their life because they, they were eating a vegan diet. So I just wanted to take some time, uh, give my my two cents on the whole um, situation and just unpack this. So to get things started off right, started, started off right, I want to start by saying we need to understand that just because someone eats a vegan diet that does not mean that they're healthy, okay? Uh, I, don't I don't really know how the bl lines got blurred. I'm sure there's some propaganda out there. Maybe, maybe it was the YouTube culture, but somehow there was the lines between like eating healthy and veganism got blurred, and now they're one and the same, and they're not, okay? Understand that True veganism is, is not a health-based diet, okay? It's an it's a animal-based diet. The, the focus of vegans are, is animal well-being. So that's important to understand. Even if, even if you're not like a conscious vegan, it's important for you to understand that because the products that are being manufactured and being labeled as vegan are being labeled and manufactured for vegans who are, are you know, animal-based, meaning that the product just simply doesn't have animal products in it. It does not mean it's healthy, okay? Like, you just, you got to understand that. And this is one of the reasons why you've never heard me call myself a vegan, ever. Uh, when people ask me, you know, what, what, how do I eat? What, you know, am I vegan? Da, 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 da. And I'm just like, no, I just eat healthy. Right. Because veganism is not a health based diet. I'm, I'm sorry. Now I know that there's, there's an argument, there's an argument out there and there will be people who will say, yes, it is. I'm not talking about the sex of veganism. I'm talking about veganism as a whole. And by, as it's defined, it is not a health based diet. Okay. Once you understand that, it makes this whole conversation a lot easier. Like, there's no reason to argue back and forth, is veganism a health-based diet, da-da-da-da-da. It's not. Now, with that being said, there are vegans who are, uh, you know, health-based, right? So, typically, like, raw vegans, uh, if, you, if you, you know, if you, raw vegans are typically healthy eaters. Uh, it's the closest thing to a healthy diet. Um, in my in my opinion, okay, that's just my opinion that you know vegans uh, practice. The other thing you got to understand is because a lot of people think that just simply by avoiding meat and animal products is going to make it's going to make them that much healthier, they're far too often willing to to look for meat substitutes. The problem with meat substitutes is that a lot of times, in order to get the taste, texture, and feel of meat. You gotta do some. You gotta do some Frankenstein stuff to the to the food. You gotta 
it's the, you know, the meat substitutes are generally highly processed foods. Now, with that being said, there are, there are meat substitutes that you can use that aren't, <laughs> I don't want to confuse y'all, that aren't really, that they're not really meat substitutes. So like, for example, mushrooms. Now, I know some of y'all are going to say, I don't like mushrooms. Okay. Here's the problem with that statement. Saying that you don't like mushrooms is like saying you don't like movies. Okay. You following me? Mo there's, there's, there's so many different movies. There's, there's thousands of movies, different genre of movies. You might not like a movie. You may have seen a movie that you didn't like, but to, it's a really, really uh, bold statement to say you just don't like movies. And there might be some people out there. There might be some people out there who just don't like movies. But my point is, when you say you, just, you don't like mushrooms, you're probably talking about one, maybe two different mushrooms. There's hundreds of species of mushrooms, all different textures, uh, flavors. So to say that you don't like mushrooms really closes you off to a world of different foods within the mushroom kingdom. And so I have found at least three or four, and, and I, ha I haven't really looked hard, but I found at least three or four that are great meat replacements. Now, I, don't, I didn't really go into, you know, getting healthy to find meat replacements. I think that's a pitfall of a lot of these vegans, uh, probably a lot of the ex-vegans, you know, and I'm making, I'm, in, I'm, I'm generalizing, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, so I'm, I'm aware of that. But, you know, I'm just, ta I'm just talking about what I see as a whole. People are, are looking to replace the meat because they think meat is making them sick. And so they think to be healthy, they need to stop eating the meat and they stop eating them animal products. And so they want to replace those things. And it's, it's just a big old jumbled spaghetti mess. Oftentimes, vegans don't eat well. And so when you, when you are promoting veganism and, and the, the general consensus is that veganism is, is healthy, it's a health-based diet, but you actually aren't eating healthy. And that may, that may be to your knowledge, or you may not be aware of that. You know, some people understand that just because you stop eating meat and dairy, that, that doesn't mean you're going to be healthy. Some people understand that. A lot of people don't. Then when you have someone who's brand new, right, they just, they don't know anything about anything as, as it relates to veganism, carnivore diet, whatever. And they start hearing vegan is healthy, vegan is healthy. And then they start doing this vegan diet. And then they start seeing the YouTubers that they were following dropping off like flies. Oh, I'm not doing veganism anymore, blah, blah, blah. It, it, you see how it can create a lot of confusion, especially for people who are new to this. So I just wanted to do my part to clear up the confusion. And I've stated this before. This is not the first time I've said this, but, you know, a lot of times people don't go back and look at my old videos uh, you know, if you're a fan of this channel, I would highly recommend that you utilize the playlists that I've put together. I've got well over 100 videos. Yes, I understand that, you know, it's a lot of videos and stuff like that, but there's a lot of good information in it. And, you know, sometimes I don't like repeating myself and doing, you know, the same video more than once. So, you know, sometimes you might have to go back and look at some of that old, old stuff. But so I, I'm not a vegan. I don't I don't promote the vegan diet. Uh, just because you stop eating meat doesn't mean you're, you're going to be healthy. You know, there's a, there's a lot of factors that play into a healthy diet. It's not even just what you eat. It's how you eat as well. So for example, you could actually, you know, you could actually consume meat. And I've said this before as well. I have found cultures in history who consumed meat, um, you know, as a primary food source and we're able to live to be over, you know, over 200 years old, but they only ate like two times a week. You know, one of the problems is that we're eating so much. We're eating three times a day, sometimes six times a day. Sometimes we just don't stop eating all day long. And, and that's, a, <laughs> to be honest with you, that's a bigger problem than eating toxic food. It's how frequently we eat. You could literally, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you this so that you just, oh, you eat whatever you want and, you know, eat toxic food and whatever. But you could literally eat toxic food once a day in a moderate uh, amount. So, like, let's say you ate, you know, 1,500 calories of toxic food as one meal a day. 
you would be fought like you would be pretty healthy you'd be much healthier than you are now eating three four times a day obviously you're eating less toxic food but keep in mind the body is designed to process out toxins and move stores towards constantly move towards a state of homeostasis so by giving your body longer periods of time to heal and restore you can actually eat more toxic foods you know so but you know obviously that's not a that's not a smart strategy because you still will you know you still will get have problems later on down the road but the problem the thing is we're so sick and we're doing things so wrong that even if you ate a toxic meal once a day it it still be so much better than the average right so anyway there's people out there stating that you know the their teeth are crumbling uh, they're developing new diseases. Keep in mind that some of these individuals are fake to begin with, right? YouTube is a business for a lot of people. Some people, some people view YouTube as a lifestyle. Some people are very honest uh, about what they do and, and whatever it is they, they promote. But there's other people out there who view YouTube as a business. And businesses are designed to make money, period. It's not about being your friend. It's not about, you know, uh, get, helping you. It's, it, businesses are out to make money for the business. That's the job of a business. So a lot of these, these YouTube channels who are businesses, they don't care about lying to you. Like, it's, not, it's nothing to lie to you. The, the only problem is when their lie catches up to them and, and now, you know, it, it affects their business. So some people were saying that with Ravana, they believed that she eats fish and eggs on a regular basis, probably always has. It just so happens she got caught and now she has to cover her tracks. That may be true. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't make that assessment because I literally just listened to her video and responded to her video. But that may be true. And I don't, I don't doubt that there are YouTubers out there who are doing that, who are just lying to their audience, right? One thing that's super important for me is that I practice what I preach. And so what that means is I don't, I don't, I'm not going to chastise you all or, you know, call you all out for doing something. Um, if, if I'm not, if I'm not perfect in that area and I'm not perfect in any area. So I don't have any business judging people, calling them out for doing this, that, and the other. Uh, furthermore, it's, it's not like, it's not my health. It's your health. I don't, I don't care, you know, like I'm here to provide the information, whether you choose to accept it or reject it, that's on you. It's, it's not, <laughs> that's none of my concern. So, you know, what do I look like chast chastising someone for, you know, eating eggs when I know good and well that on occasion I'll consume bread that was made with eggs. Like that doesn't make sense to me. And you know, I don't eat, I don't eat scr like scram I don't eat eggs anymore, raw eggs, scrambled eggs, et cetera. But, you know, I get it. There's certain things I consume that will have egg in it. I know it. I know it happens. Now, I don't, I don't buy it. I don't, you know, cook it at home or whatever like that. But I don't have a super strict diet to where it's like, hey, was that made with egg or something? And then, you know, if it is, I won't eat it. Um, I just limit I just greatly limit how frequently I eat stuff like that. That's all. That's all. Now, I don't eat meat at all. So, you know, that's what I do. But I still don't judge people for, for eating meat. Uh, I think that there's a, there's a, you know, when it comes to veganism, there's a side of it that you want to be conscious of the animals that you're, you're, you're ingesting, right? It's like you, you're, you're eating something. You're eating something that was alive that, you know, was a, what they call sentient beings. And so for me personally, I've decided I don't want to do that anymore. And people be like, oh, but plants were alive when you, before you ate them. And that's 100% true. <laughs> the, the difference is, you know, I eat fruit. So it's the, the ovaries of a plant. I eat very little actual plant life, uh, which is what we're, we're supposed to eat. We're really supposed to be eating the ovaries of a plant. But Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So with that being said, a lot of these vegans aren't really practicing what they preach. So then when they get caught, they have to backtrack. The other side of it is 
some of these people were genuine in their approach. Some of them really went into veganism thinking, hey, this is going to be healthier. I feel great because they had a lot of, you know, maybe they had maybe they had a lot of good uh, reaction to it up front. Maybe they changed their diet. Maybe they were still eating a vegan diet, but maybe they went from a plant-based vegan diet to eating a lot more meat substitutes and stuff. There's a lot of synthetic and chemical foods in the vegan world. So there's no telling. Saying that you're vegan, it's just such a, that doesn't tell me anything. I don't know what you're eating. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so maybe after a while of eating synthetic foods all the time, they start developing problems. That makes sense to me. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that eating plant-based is unhealthy. It just means that eating the quote-unquote vegan diet may be unhealthy if you're not a plant-based vegan, you know? Um, I'm sure there's people out there who will say that they were, that they were plant-based vegans and they had problems as well, gut issues and things like that. Well, once again, what, what types of foods are you eating you know, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of plant based vegans out there trying to eat these vegetables, these vegetables. And it's like in addition to the fact that you're plant based, you also don't cook your food. It's like raw, you're raw and you're eating these vegetables. Vegetables are extremely hard for the body to digest. OK, like vegetables are really hard for the body to digest. And I understand that there's people out there that think, oh, you know, you're supposed to eat a lot of vegetables. Vegetables are highly dense foods. And the fact that it's a highly dense food means it's hard for the body to process. The reason why I tell people don't, you know, that it's, it's preferable not to eat meat, or I should say one of the reasons, there's many reasons, is because it's highly, it's a dense food, right? The, the goal is to uh, eat light foods, high water content foods, foods that are easy for the body to process. That's the goal. That's really the goal. And so when you're eating these dense vegetables all the time, especially raw, right? You're not, you're not cooking, you're not breaking them down, you're not making it easier for your body to, to digest. I could see why you have problems. Like none of this, make, none of this surprises me at all because we are so confused about what a healthy diet is. We have no clue. And that's why you hear a lot of people that are like, oh, just do what works best for you. It's like that's the blanket statement that people put out there because they don't know what else to say. It's like we don't, we don't know. Nobody knows <laughs> what to eat. You know, it's like people say, oh, well, how can eating fruits be the, a human being's natural diet when fruit doesn't grow everywhere? I mean, I've recently heard that. It's like, you don't know what, like, as far as, as far as like our, our history, the history of this planet, we, no one, no one alive today, because we die so early now, we, you know, we're not, we don't live very long. No one alive today knows what the, the actual earth was like a thousand years ago. Okay, I understand. I know the scientists out there, they're going to be like, well, we've got science that can prove it. It's only, no, it's not observable science, okay? It's not observable science. It's not 100%. We don't know. It's our best guess. It's what we believe based on, you know, when I was younger, I was taught that the rings of a tree represented X amount of years. I don't know if it was one year or, or seven years or whatever, but each ring represented a fixed amount of years that that tree had been alive. And so based on the amount of rings on the tree, you could determine how old it was. That's not true. It's not true. <laughs> like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of information out there that's, that's, that's science. That's just not true. It's like a best guess. So we don't know what the earth is, was like. We don't know what, you know, what kind of foods were available then. Um, you know, it's, it's very possible that the earth was more lush. I know we've been slowly destroying the earth. I know it's becoming less lush since, since I've been alive. So I could imagine what's happened over the past thousand years. So how can you say that, you know, fruit isn't our natural diet you, based on our climate today? Well, maybe based on our climate today, we live in an unnatural environment. And so therefore, it doesn't make sense for fruit to be the nat, you know, our natural food because of the climate we've created, but it's an unnatural climate, right? So I, I really don't like arguing because none of us really know. 
all the only thing I know is that the diet that I eat now, which I would consider a health-based diet. So you want to put me in a category, I eat a health-based diet. What does that tell you? It doesn't tell you anything. <laughs> it doesn't tell you anything. That's why I don't like the categories and stuff. I do teach specifics about what I eat and what I don't eat uh, and why, right? And, and that's really to help you determine what you want to mess around with in, with your diet. But ultimately, we need to understand the detox process our body goes through when we start eating healthier, that's important because if you don't understand the detox process, you're going to start eating healthier. You're going to start eating the right things and you're going to misinterpret the signs and you're going to say, oh, this is making me sick and you're going to quit. So we need to understand the, the detox process and the symptoms that come along with eating a healthier diet. We need to be willing to give ourselves time, right? You know, you can't, you can't try a diet for one month. That, that's not long enough. Like it takes time for the body to adjust. Uh, you know, I, personally, I would, I would genuinely say, give yourself like four to six months at least to really give yourself a chance and also be writing this stuff down, like write stuff down, document stuff you, you, so you don't forget. That's why I've been promoting these journals, these fasting journals. You can write your diet in here and you can track your diet you know, or it doesn't even have to be my fasting journal. It could be anything. Write it down. Document it. Like, you, like if you're serious about this, it's work because there's a lot there. Hey, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of big businesses, as I mentioned earlier, businesses are designed to make money who make money off of, off of our sickness and they make money off of selling us these products. So we have to unlearn a lot of stuff. So anyway, with all the ex-vegans out there, you know, that doesn't, that, that doesn't worry me at all. There's probably a hundred he like healthy vegans for all the ex-vegans that you're seeing on YouTube. Like for every one unhealthy vegan or one guy who's like, oh, it's killing me. There's a hundred guys that are like, it was the greatest thing I ever did. I'll never return. We, we just need to be wise about the type of foods we're putting in our mouth, whether you're a vegan, whether you're a carnivore, it doesn't matter. You just be smart about it. Like if you're going to eat meat, eat the healthiest meat, eat farm, uh, organic farm raised uh, meat where the cows or whatever were actually fed real food and not synthetic food or not other animals, <laughs> you know, like be smart about it. If that's the route you're going to go, you know, um, there's, there's two individuals that I, I want to point out because everybody is like, they're all worried about, you know, these ex vegans and stuff like that. But there's, there's, a, there's people out there who thrive. There's very popular people who thrive. Okay. Annette Larkins, she's probably like 76 years old now, maybe 78. I'm not actually sure. Uh, but I saw a video of her when she was 74 and the woman looked like she was probably in her late forties. Like if it weren't for the, if it weren't, if it weren't for the, how, how like she dressed and you could just tell she was old from this, her demeanor and she could probably pass for a 40 something year old woman. Um, she's been a vegan. I think, I think she had been a vegan for 40 years at the time, I think. So there's, you know, people out there saying, Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> You know, I've been vegan for 10 years and, and, and around 10 years, that's when that's when everything starts to go bad. Well, she's been vegan for 30 years. So what, like it, it does it only apply to certain people? And if it only applies to certain if veganism or if a, or if a plant based diet, I should say, is only detrimental to certain people, then we really need to figure out who the people are like because it, it just it doesn't make sense to me to make blanket statements to say oh, it doesn't work, right? Or, it, oh, it makes you sick. It does this, it does that. When we have examples of people who have been doing it for decades and they're perfectly healthy, not just perfectly healthy, but they look super young for their age. Uh, the other one that I wanted to bring up was Dr. Noon S. Amin Ra, okay? This dude is a vegan strongman. He, I think he has a, a championship or was, was a, did have a championship record of deadlifting. I mean, the guy is stacked. Like, he looks extremely healthy. Oh, he talks really, really slow. It's extremely hard to listen, <laughs> listen to him. But he, he looks like a modern-day, 
like God. It just he, you know, the way they would like depict gods and stuff. It, like the dude, he looks very healthy. He eats one meal a day, so he practices uh, fasting, and uh, I believe he does fifteen hundred calories, and it's plant based. <laughs> like, and the dude is stacked. So there's people out there that will tell you you can't build muscle, you can't be strong. Look, if that's true, then then these people are lying. Like all of these people, I'm giving two examples, but there's hundreds. I've done research on this stuff for years. Like there's hundreds. There's fruitarians. There's people who only eat fruit, who run triathlons and and not just run, but do very well. Like they do very, some of the top athletes uh, eat plant-based or even uh, fruit-based diets. So are they just special? Like is it a genetic thing? Or is it just simply that we don't know how to eat properly and we think when we hear that someone's plant-based, we think we know what they eat, we think we understand what that means, but we don't really? Like is it just possible that there's a lot of misinformation out there? You know, like that makes more sense to me. Now I've been doing, I've been doing, uh, I stopped eating meat about a year and a half ago. And, you know, before I stopped eating meat, I had already like slowed down to a creep. Like I was still only eating meat once in a while. So just full disclosure, I've only, I've only been meatless for a year and a half, but I've pretty much kind of been on this track for about two, two years, uh, maybe two and a half years. And I've only felt better. And then they, they tell me that it takes, <laughs> it takes about 10 years for it to start rotting my teeth and stuff like that. So, you know, I tell people all the time, well, we'll see, you know, we'll see in about seven, seven, eight years. Cause I'm not going to stop. And if I stop, you all will be the first ones to know because my, my job like what I have, my self-proclaimed job is to teach you all the, the, the best information that I personally have available at the time. So if what I'm teaching at any point in time becomes obsolete or uh, I learn something new that discredits something that I used to believe, I'm going to tell y'all. And I can, and here's the thing, I can be honest like that because I've always that's my platform. Like I never, I've never pretended that I just feel like I'm right about everything. Some people may think that I think I'm right about everything, but that's not the reality. I just, I just have firm beliefs in what I you know, believe in because of the amount of research that I've done and the experimentation that I've done. So because of how I learn what I learn, I'm, I'm very soundly rooted in my beliefs. But that doesn't mean I'm not open to being wrong or learning more. I'm always open to change. I'm, I learn new stuff all the time. Like, that's literally my job is to learn new stuff. So, you know, I'm always open to that. And I'll let y'all know. And I'm telling you now. So if, you know, if I find something out that I've been teaching that's wrong, you'll know. So with that being said, I don't know. I feel like I just, I kind of started rambling at some point. I hope you guys got something good out of this video. I wanted to let you all know that I, um, I, started, I started doing one-on-one -on -one consultations. I, 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 I opened it up um, maybe about a year and a half ago originally, maybe a year, year and a half ago. And I never really promoted it because I was just so busy. Um, I, I, I pretty much answered all of my emails, all of my comments, everything. Uh, so, you know, in addition to doing that, plus doing the consultations, it was kind of overwhelming. So I just didn't want a lot of people scheduling consultations, but I've opened it up and I'm, I'm re-announcing it just to let you all know, uh, go to a healthy and you can schedule a consultation. There's a consultations tab, um, uh, in the drop down menu, you can schedule a consultation. Um, I've got three separate time durations depending on you know what you need if you guys want to have a full uh comprehensive breakdown of you know whatever it is you're dealing with and the steps you need to start uh reversing any issues that you have lose weight you know any type of disease we could do that also i want to let you all know that may 17th here in dallas okay in the dallas fort worth area 
we are going to be hosting our first event. It's a wellness event, and we're going to have several guest speakers come out, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We are going to be serving uh, food and we're going to be taking pictures. If you're in the area, if you're close, or if you want to travel, grab a ticket. Grab a ticket. If you want to bring a friend with you, you can grab a discounted ticket for bringing a friend, okay? And so we're going to be talking about how to restore our wellness. Uh, we're going, you're going to get an opportunity to, to see um, many, you know, the, the speakers are all members of the group. So these are people that I've maybe interviewed or people that you guys are familiar with. So you'll get an opportunity to, you know, see our family. And you'll get to see them in person. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't think this stuff is real. It's like, oh, you know, every once in a while, I'll get a, I'll get a weird comment, and somebody's like, oh, they, you know, they had surgery or something. Like, there's no way this is possible. And it's like, no, it is possible. We do it all the time. If you're if you're already healthy, maybe you're already in the the you know health vein, and you're doing well, but you want to inspire one of your friends or someone else to get healthy. This is a great opportunity to bring them out and let them see. Sometimes people have to see things, right? When you could see a man who lost 200 pounds, you could touch him, you could talk to him. That's powerful. Like that's so much more powerful than reading about it. That's even more powerful than seeing a video. It's like, no, nah, this person's real. He's right here. I could touch him. Like I can see him. You know what I mean? I can ask him questions. So we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be a good time. May 17th, 2019, all right, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Grab your tickets today. Reserve your seats. We won't be taking, uh, we won't be selling tickets at the door, so you do have to get your tickets ahead of time. Seating is limited. Time is running out. We're almost a month out from the event. So grab some, grab some tickets. Come out and support. It is going to be fun. Like, it's going to be fun. If you can make it and you don't come, you're going to wish you came. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys. Anyway, uh, if you guys liked this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I will see you guys next time.